do I know what level of English I have? Well, the simple answer to this is to take a level placement test. Preply have a completely free level placement test that you can take. I'll leave the link down below in the description for you. It takes around 20 minutes to complete and has 36 questions. It's completely free and you don't have to sign up to anything. As soon as you finish the test, the results are immediate. You can put in your email address and then you get a copy of your results also sent to you. It will show you exactly what your strengths are, so things that you are good at and you got correct, as well as things that you need to improve, so any mistakes that you made on the test. One thing I really like about this test is that it's multiple choice, but there is an I don't know option. What's really good about that is if you genuinely don't know the answer, <laughs> then you're not forced to guess what the answer is, giving you a more accurate result. So if you're taking the test and you're just guessing things, it's not going to give you an accurate result because you may end up getting those questions correct when actually you don't really know the answer. So if you genuinely don't know the answer to a question, just tick the I don't know option and you will know that that's something you need to work on and improve. So the link for the test is in the description of this video. Go and take it and let me know what level you got. If you're curious about what level I got, I got C1. I got a C1, but I'll tell you why. <laughs> I got some of the questions incorrect on purpose because I wanted to see what would happen if it corrected me, if I got things wrong and so on. So if you take that test and you get a C2 level, then you've officially beaten me on the test. <laughs> so go and take that test. Let me know what level you got. Question number two, do I need grammar and how do I make it more fun? So let's answer that first one. Do I need grammar? Yes, <laughs> you do, that's the short answer. But why do you need grammar? Well, you need grammar to know how to structure the sentences, how to express yourself. If you have no grammar and you're just throwing random words and pieces of vocabulary, people aren't going to know what you're trying to say. You need grammar to be able to communicate. Now, do you need perfect grammar? Yes and no, there are places, times and situations where you need perfect grammar. For example, you're taking an exam. If you're taking an official language exam, then you need good, perfect grammar to show to the examiner, this is the grammar I know and I can use it perfectly. Or if you're studying for academics and you're marked on your grammar or something like that, you're maybe studying at university, then yes, grammar is important. Perfect grammar is important. However, I think the majority of us here are probably not doing these things. <laughs> we're probably just learning for fun or we're maybe just wanting to communicate on a daily basis in another language, in English, for example. In this case, you don't need perfect grammar. If you're just gonna be traveling the world and you only need English to talk to people in shops or at the airport or for transportation and things like that, do you need perfect grammar? No, you just need to be able to communicate your message. You don't need to get it perfect. You just need to get your message across. So in that situation, you don't need perfect grammar. So to answer the second part of this question, how can I make grammar more fun? Well, you take activities that you usually enjoy doing and you take note, you be more aware of the grammar that's used in that. I'll give you an example with me and Japanese. While I read something in Japanese, because I do enjoy reading graded readers, so graded readers are essentially books that are written for very specific levels, so written for beginners or intermediate or advanced learners and so on. I enjoy reading these and just taking note of any grammar that's new. So as I'm reading, I'm highlighting any new vocabulary, things like that, and then I'll come across a structure where I'm like, huh, what does this mean? <laughs> so I will highlight that to come back to it later, carry on reading. And a lot of the time I can understand from the context what that grammar means. It depends. With Japanese, I struggle a little bit more, but say, for example, with Spanish, I can usually get it. So anyway, I take that grammatical structure, if I'm not able to get it from the context or if I'm just curious to learn more about it, and I go on to Google right? I go on to Google and I type in that structure and then I put grammar. Maybe you're reading a text and you see the sentence, I have eaten. So you're like, I have eaten. What does this mean? There are two verbs, have eaten. Why are there two verbs? What on earth does this mean? So you go on to Google, easy peasy. You type have eaten grammar. That's it. That's it. 
And now it's going to bring up loads of different articles, loads of different videos, loads of different blog posts, loads of different websites, all about present perfect. Ah, oh, I have a name. I have a name for that grammar. So now you know what that grammatical structure is called. You go on YouTube. The best free resource is what you're using right now to watch this video. Go to YouTube, type in present perfect grammar. Bam, you got hundreds of videos explaining present perfect. Bam, you've learned present perfect. So it really is as simple as that. If you ever come across a grammatical structure where you're like, oof, I've got absolutely no idea what this means. You searched online still can't find anything about it, then you can ask a teacher or you can ask a friend. I don't always recommend just asking native speakers. This is where I feel like, you know, the whole idea of, you know, native speakers are the best teachers thing is absolute rubbish because a lot of the time I've asked native speakers who are not teachers to help explain things to me about language and they just have no idea or they may explain it, but it's just not clear and it ends up confusing me more. Yes, you can ask a friend, but I highly recommend you ask a teacher or something like that. You can book lessons on Preply or whatever. Ask a friend who's a teacher, okay? I will leave a link in the description for Preply lessons, but just uh, be aware that if you ask native speakers who aren't teachers, they may end up confusing you a bit more and then you'll get it into your head like, oh, this is actually really, really complicated when it doesn't have to be. A teacher will be able to describe it to you better and be able to explain it and you'll understand it better. So keep that in mind. Question number three, how can I improve my English listening skills? Well, the simple answer to this is to listen more. <laughs> That's literally it. But let's try and be a bit more helpful here. Next time you listen to something, think, why don't I understand? Is that a simple case of you don't understand the vocabulary that's used or the grammatical structures that are used? If it's a case of grammar and vocabulary, bam, then you know to study more vocabulary and more grammar and that's it. However, let's imagine you're watching something on TV and you've got the subtitles on and then you take off the subtitles and you're like, whoa, I don't understand anything. You put the subtitles back on and suddenly, hold on, but I understand what they're saying. I understand everything with the subtitles on, but I don't understand it when the subtitles are off. So you know now that it's not a grammar or vocabulary issue. Now it's something else. And what it probably is, is stress and connected speech, assimilation, possibly a little bit of intonation, although this probably isn't really the case. A lot of people think it is, but it's probably not. Stress, what happens with English is with some words, we weaken them. We make them a little bit softer, we make them weaker. So instead of saying fish and chips, I, I, I don't say I like fish and chips. Yeah, that sounds really strange. I say, I like fish and chips, fish and chips. So notice that and becomes really weak and this is due to sentence stress. Now I have a full video all about sentence stress that talks about exactly this in more detail. I'll link it below in the description. Go and watch it. Another thing that could be an issue is that we are connecting the words together. So sometimes what happens when you're listening, it sounds like a really, really long word. You turn the subtitles back on and it's like three or four little words and you're like, oh, hold on, but it sounds like one big word. And this is because of connected speech. So we connect words together in English and this can make it sound like one big Frankenstein sort of word when actually it's just us connecting it together. I have a full playlist about that as well. Go and check out connected speech. Another thing could be assimilation. Simply assimilation is where we have two sounds together, but instead of just connecting them together like connected speech, we change one of the sounds to make it easier to transition to the next sound. So again, I have videos all about this, <laughs> but a really, really quick and easy common example is did you becomes did you, did you, did you go, did you see the film instead of did ya did you? So you see how these sorts of things can really affect your, your understanding. So my advice is to read up about these sorts of things, get familiar with the rules, get familiar of their existence, and then you'll start hearing them and you're like, ah, oh, oh yeah. So this person does say, did you go to the cinema? They don't say, did you go to the cinema? With all strong forms. No, no, no. 
They're using weak forms, connected speech, assimilation, oh, and the intonation as well is very different. So if they use this intonation, it means one thing, but if they use this intonation, it means something else. So it becomes quite an interesting topic. It doesn't have to be very complicated. You can just learn the very basics of it, like I have on my YouTube channel, and that's completely enough to be able to understand conversations and listen and understand what's going on. Another thing that you can do is do some good old fashioned dictations. <laughs> so as you're listening to something, you can just find like an interview or something or a video that you like or a TV series and you can do a dictation. So you play a little bit, you pause and then you try and write. You play a little bit, you pause and then you try and write. And then you check what you have written against what the person has said. I sometimes prefer to do these dictations kind of in my head. So what I mean by that is I will listen to something, then I'll pause and I'll kind of think about it for literally like a second and then I'll rewind it and go back. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, I did hear that right. You know, I'll put the subtitles back on again. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I did, I did hear that right. That's interesting how they say it. <laughs> so you can also do that as well. You don't have to sit with paper and pen. Question number four, how do I improve my writing skills? Well, the easy answer is to write more. But how do you know what to write if you have this block? This is usually what tends to happen is you get this block and you don't actually know what to write and how to write it. So what do you do? you read more. So find some texts of things that you really want to start writing about. So let's imagine you just want to write emails to your colleagues at work. Well, have a look at how your colleagues write their emails. How are they structured? What vocabulary do they use? Just be more observant and pay more attention to these things. Actually analyze it. How have they structured this? What preposition have they used with this verb? How do they start the email if it's very formal? How do they end the email if it's very informal? And these sorts of things. Just observe around you. Think about what you want to write. And you might think, well, I just want to improve my writing in general. No, no, but let's be specific here. Because the more specific you are, the easier it is to target a problem and focus on that problem. If you try and tackle the world, <laughs> it's gonna be really hard. But if you just really, really narrow things down and you get things very specific, it becomes so much less overwhelming and it becomes so much easier to, to focus on. Final question, number five, how do I improve my English speaking skills? There are many ways to improve your speaking skills, but I'm just gonna talk about three of them here. The first one being to read aloud. So I'm going to assume that you don't quite have the confidence yet to have a conversation. Maybe you don't have the level yet to be able to hold the conversation. So what you can do is at least start practicing moving those muscles and getting things moving and speaking. So reading aloud can really really help. Now you've got to be careful with English because it's not it's not a phonetic language. I always struggle to say that sentence. It's not a phonetic language and this essentially means that when you're reading it it is not spoken, it's not read how it is written. This is why having an audio really helps or having someone at least read it for you first and then you can listen to how it's pronounced. These sorts of things can, can really help just to get you speaking. And not only speaking, but with the correct pronunciation because the earlier you tackle these bad pronunciation habits, the easier it will be in the long run, trust me. So find a text that you enjoy. Honestly, don't go for something too hard. You don't want something with big, big complicated words, complicated grammar. This is about speaking. It's about moving this. It's not about picking up everything else, grammar, vocabulary, da 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 da. Just focus on speaking. The simpler the text, the easier it's going to be, and the less you're gonna be thinking, oh my God, what on earth am, what on earth am I reading? What does all this vocabulary mean? What are all these new words? It doesn't matter. As I said, you're moving this, and that's the most important thing when it comes to practicing speaking skills. The second thing you can do is find a conversation partner. So this can be someone that you just talk to in that language, or it can be someone who you maybe exchange languages with. So they help you with English and you help them with your native language or a language that you know and you're able to help them with. That way you'll have a real human there to talk to. But this can be quite intimidating and quite scary 
And if your level isn't very good at the very beginning, for example, to be able to hold a conversation, then you may end up actually finding yourself going back to your native language and not really speaking much of your target language. And the last thing I recommend, which is the one I probably most recommend you do, is to book a class with a teacher. They're going to be the most patient. They're going to want you to speak your target language more. They are also going to be able to explain things to you if you have any questions, get things wrong and so on. And they can plan a lesson that's perfect for your level. So what's happened with me in the past is I've gone to conversation meetups or I've met a tandem partner and they've brought something that's way too hard for me or way too basic for me because they're not trained teachers, they don't know, right? It's not their fault. But by having lessons, your teacher will know exactly what you need to learn, what you need to practice and what your interests are. So they can choose the right materials that are perfect for your level, that are going to challenge you a little bit, but they're not going to overwhelm you. Remember to let me know what level you got from the level placement test by Preply down in the description. Remember, I got C1 level. So if you get anything higher than that, then you've officially beaten me. <laughs> Enjoy your week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye you maybe teach them your language and they teach you theirs. <laughs> Is that the right grammar? <laughs>